Hello, friends, and welcome to Binge Clock, the podcast where we watch something and then we talk about it. I'm Joy Selden, and I've seen almost everything. I'm Danielle Gaw, and I've seen almost nothing. I'm Nella, and it's been a long time since I've been a camp counselor, so this whole, like, having the energy of seeing kids at 8 a.m. on a Monday is just not doing it for me. (laughs) That's not motivating to you to think of their (laughs) sad little faces? You don't have the energy for them? I remember kids being just as tired at 8 a.m. as me. Like, they'd they'd roll in, and they'd just be like, ugh, and I'd be like, (laughs) me too. I mean, listen, I'm not going to lie. I asked one of my students this morning how her weekend was, and she responded, it was good, but way too short. Yes. And I said. She gets it. That kid gets it. You get it. At age nine, somehow, you get it. Yep, capitalism <laughs> like that, will destroy that, us all. It's like that TikTok of the three-year-old who says stuff that obviously her mother says. <laughs> like, I feel like she's already, this kid already has the lingo down. She's going to fit right into that nine to five. Exactly. Like, the next time I ask her how she's doing, she's going to look at me and say, live in the dream. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Oh no, God. no. The, I think I think the thing that would break my heart is if I asked a kid how their weekend or how, how they're doing, and they just look at me and go, "Oh, you know," and I'm going to be like, oh. "Who hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> You're too young for that. <laughs> You're too young for oh, you know. Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah." <sighs> The Gen Zers are not allowed to have. It. Actually, no, they're smaller than Gen Z. I don't What's know. What's the what tiny generation called now? It's a really good we have question. A name for them? I don't know. I don't think we, I don't I don't think we have either. that distinction yet. They're, uh, I don't they're have still, the distinction yet. Their distinction is still brewing. It's uh, <laughs> the post Gen Z population. They have it. Their their moniker for their entire generation is still in the Crystallis stage, mm-hmm. and has yes. yet to emerge as a beautiful swear jar. You butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I knew There's it. the one. I knew we wouldn't be able to do the wrap up without at least one. <laughs> anyway, friends, hi. Uh, Hello. After that three and a half minute long intro, we we are here to wrap up Fringe. Uh, if you're if you're a, a longtime listener of Binge Clock and you listen to our Almost Human season. You know that we like to do a little wrap up at the end, basically just an extension of our one more things to sort of cover some things, maybe look at the show as a whole, have opinions, <laughs> mostly about season five. <laughs> We're here to sort of talk about talk about the whole the whole kitten caboodle that was fringe. Because wow, what a wild ride. <laughs> yep. Yes, yes it was. A wild ride. As I desperately scroll through 201 pages of notes to find something to talk about. My goodness. Danielle what do is I an do? Olympian. What do I say? An yeah. Olympian for her note taking. Yes. I mean, why don't we why don't we talk about like our favorite our favorite uh characters? Oh. Because it's like I just it's so hard to choose. Like I, I love the whole say, fringe team. It's really hard. It's like my brain gives five answers at once. I know. Because at first I'm, I'm like, oh, Astrid. And then I'm like, but what about Charlie? And then I'm like, but what about Royals? And then I'm like, well, what about the, Nina? What about Nina? And then I'm like, well, the core team is pretty solid, too. And then all of a sudden I've named everyone. That's I, fair. You're not wrong. Uh, do you have a favorite villain? Or like at least a villain you thought was interesting? A villain I thought was interesting. Not Perfume Man. Certainly <laughs> not Perfume not. Man. Nope. Listeners, I've been going back through some of the old episodes to uh, keep up that swear jar tally. And the hilarious two seconds that we spent on Perfume Man in that episode, it was so funny. None of us wanted to talk about it. We were just like, <laughs> hey, guess what? Uh, we hate this. We hate this. Mm-hmm. Hate it with us, friends, for two whole minutes. I'll tell you who <laughs> I don't miss. Ted Bundy with a pituitary problem. Ah, yes. Yep. Didn't All like that he guy. happened so early in the season, and then we kept seeing his clones throughout the rest of the show. If they laugh at one banana. <laughs> uh. This is the rule of three, except they made it eight, and suddenly it was no longer funny. Yes. Mm. <laughs> it's oh, true. I will, I will not miss that, dude. We 
we should have done a quick count. A quick count of how many times? Of Yeah, of how many times there was a villain who was killing other people in order to save a loved one of theirs. Or trying to figure out the pituitary gland and <laughs> misunderstanding it. I feel like we relied a lot on the pituitary gland. Like, it was like the magnets of bodily functions. Like, pituitaries, how do they work? <laughs> Just, just make it up. Yeah. No one will know. Does anyone really know what a pituitary is? Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. No one's going to look this up. We don't even have the internet in 2010. Who cares? The internet could kill you in 2010. You know, it could be internet- possessed by all sorts of things. <laughs> the internet could kill you in 2010. We saw that here, too. Wait, Joy, were you about to talk about a villain that you actually liked? <laughs> <laughs> I... So I, I kind of miss the, um, this is going to be kind of abstract, but hopefully you'll bear with me. I kind of missed the, like, when Walter was the was the real villain the whole time, when, like, test subjects would show up out of nowhere, and you'd be like, oh, yeah, I totally tested on that person uh, and almost killed them. But they're fine. They're fine. <laughs> they're fine. You know, and then we kind of, like, dropped that whole thing. Yeah. Whatever happened to it, but that, But it was Walter. like, I thought it was interesting and complicated and like it made you, you know, it made it made the character of Walter who he was, you yes. know, and then we kind of dropped it by the wayside because I guess we needed to have more sympathy for Walter. Right, like the Walter who experimented on children, that Walter, right? I wonder whether we dropped it when that Olivia ceased to exist, you know, like when our mm-hmm. Olivia became the Olivia who was never experimented on then it just kind of didn't come up in the same way. That could be. But she also was experimented on because they were able to, like, prime her with more Cortexafan. Right. Because she was already primed. She was, but it wasn't as intense as before. I don't really feel like experimenting on children comes with, like, a a degrees of of badness. Right. No, (laughs) I, I agree with you. And... The new version of Olivia that we had was just just had less trauma and less baggage around being experimented on, which I guess is why it came up less. I don't know. Like, also as, true. As, I don't know if this is like a cheap answer, but that reminded me that I think one of my favorite villains is when Walter Nitt was a villain. Very solid villain. Well, when he was actually a villain, right? And yes. not like, I'm not what you think. Exactly. <laughs> like When Walter Nitt was the villain. I really enjoyed yeah. that whole part of the show. Yeah. No, I I, I dug that as well. And I, I appreciated that, like, without William Bell to kind of fall back on, mm-hmm. you know, you get to have a Walternate that, like, does these, you know, quote unquote, terrible, horrible things. Mm-hmm. And it is a good foil for our Walter to, like, bounce off of and sort of yeah. have to be the good one. Is that another reason, possibly, our Walter ended up seeming so much more compassionate and seeming like less of a monster because all of a sudden we had a counterpoint for him who was so much worse. Yes. Except he didn't experiment on children. That was his hard line in the sand. (laughs) (laughs) There it was. He had the one. He had that one hard line in the sand. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, (laughs) yeah, I I think having Walter Nitt as a villain was a really nice foil For our Walter and not even in the way of like, I don't have the brains and the the smarter I get, the meaner I'll be. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but that's not who you were, Walter. You were just people are just a mishmash of good and bad. (laughs) Like you're you're the parts of your brain don't make a good or bad person. That's just not how it happens Mm -hmm. with your brain. You would have been more alert and probably making you know, more uh, decisions, whether those decisions are good or bad, mm-hmm. you know, I just I still love that moment. I mean, you know, I hate that they made it about the brains, but I do still love that moment where they actually reactivate the brains in his head. And yeah. he is suddenly a very starkly <gasps> different person. Yes. And just instantly angry and instantly like, you know, where am I? What are you doing to me? And like, obviously suddenly has agency. And then of course he says one of my favorite lines, which is you've drugged me. (laughs) I mean, I love that moment because it's just peak John Noble, you know, I know he's just so fantastic. I know he's so good. He is very, very good in that moment. No. Yeah. I, but like, we also had, 
you know, college kids who they would call up and be like, hey, we did this weird thing like a long time ago. Do you remember? You mm-hmm. feeling some extra, extra bits from that maybe? <laughs> you know, like, and then we just kind of dropped it. And I was like, what if, like, you know, a lot of people go to Harvard. Mm -hmm. Like, what if there were more random students, you know, like throughout, just sprinkled throughout the series? That Walter experimented on? Yes, the In the 70s. The Walter experiment files. (laughs) (laughs) What was it? What's it that Astrid calls those home videos? Oh, yes. Walter's nightmare or something. Mm -hmm. But yes, I like, I like, you know, the sort of abstract of like Walter as the bad guy, even though it's just Walter is complicated. And, you know, has a, has a history of abuse and a history of, like, putting science first and that kind of thing. So probably Walter is my favorite bad guy, even though we don't technically canonically get to see it in the show very often. Yeah. Like, we get to see this is what Walter was, you mm-hmm. know, and s- sparkles of, like, what he used to be. But, like, not really clear and present stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you have a villain you like, Nella? Or are they I mostly... mean, like is a strong word. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here for for like the. I mean, I just wish that Walter as like the uh, sort of Victor Frankenstein of the entire thing. Like mm. you, you caused this all. This is all your fault, Walter. Um, I just wish that that would have wrapped up when the two universes then were kind of collided uh, to fix everything. Because mm-hmm. again, like I just got so annoyed in season five where we're still playing the. But if we put the bits of his brain back in, he'll be evil again. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like Walter. The idea of Walter's actions being the the villainy, him having to learn. No, you no stop. I'm going to slap your wrist every time you try to do an experiment on someone mm-hmm. without their you know full consent. Uh, you can't just do that anymore, Walter. Yeah, because it's more complicated. That's actually interesting. Instead of it just being like, no, his brain meats made him bad, actually. Well, maybe that's a good segue to talk about where we would have preferred the show had gone, right? Because, listen, anyone who's been listening to this podcast knows that not a single one of us enjoyed what they did with season five. So <laughs> what do you what do you all think would have made for a better show had we the opportunity to go back in time, rewrite the timeline, and make a new season four slash five? I wouldn't have a season five. Oh, yeah. But we couldn't just end at the end of season four the way it no, was, right? No, so what would I mean, we do to season four? Delete the whole arc situation, maybe. I don't know. Oh, you mean from season three? Three. Like the whole. Yeah. Yes. Three Three was the uh, was the arc that would have, you know, that eventually connected them. And then four was them connected. I'm still kind of fascinated to know how they actually connected everybody. Oh, Peter. I meant arc as in Noah's arc. Oh, that <laughs> literal yeah. arc. The literal yeah. Never arc. Mind. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely could do without that. Never Again, mind. Fair, fair, fair. Get rid of William Bell as the big bad in season four. Mm. Fine. Bring bring back uh, Jared Harris. That's fine. Bring him back. <laughs> bring the threat of the observer's invasion as the big bad and Donald as the one trying to help you bridge the gap. But then, like, don't do the weird stuff with the kid. Just have it like, hey, remember the last time an observer caught feelings? I caught them really bad. Like, how do I even begin? <laughs> uh, and and try to mesh that together. Just But just completely get rid of the be- belly as the big bad. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Interesting. So if season four was almost, so if it was almost like, we got to see the team deal with the observers as they were starting their invasion not after the invasion was complete. Yeah, like the threat of the invasion, because we know that once they're actually here, there's like, there's no ticking time bomb. But Mm -hmm. if you can actually play with the, they're coming, these are a threat. They Mm -hmm. do intend to like, uh, take over our world and terraform it. And like, Mm -hmm. we we will all die because of it. We Mm -hmm. will be torn asunder. We have to stop them. Yeah, Um, I think that could be. I mean, I I agree insofar as uh, I definitely don't think we need a jump 20 years, 21 years into the future. Yeah. Yeah, Right. 
I mean, if anything, yeet Donald back to what from 21 years in the future and him, and him being like, I somehow figured out a way to come back here to warn you all. Yeah. Uh, by the way, hi, I'm September. <laughs> we <laughs> tried to fight me? them. It didn't work, but let's try again, only differently this time. Mm. I'm not quite sure what's going to work because they took the thingy out of my face of my brain. Yeah, yeah. But I'm still, like, super smart, so you're welcome. <laughs> exactly. You know, I think like, I guess that- my brain didn't change so much as I just can't jump as easily from matter. You know, I can't I can't transpose matter as easily as before. And then you have that, and then you have December being the one observer that helps yeet him into the past and then suffers for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then no Michael, because we didn't really need Michael. I don't hate, well, okay. I, the only reason I hate what they did with Michael is because he's far less of a character in season five than he was when we met him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like when we met him, it was the, you know, it was the feral child narrative, but something, but with a twist, right? Like something that didn't quite make sense about his physiology and like, mm-hmm. yes, he had never, you know, seen sunlight and never lived, abo- apparently never lived above ground and like all this other stuff. And he didn't have the biome that other people do. But, you know, basically the feral child thing where I'm just like, what if you also still continued to have, a feral child thing. I mean, like, you know, he's important and like deal with Michael as he's adjusting. Mm -hmm. He was so much more intuitive, so much more intuitive. And like something went wrong and he warned the team. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you could have made him an active member. Well, maybe not an active member because he's still a child, but like, well, he looks like a child, but he's not actually a child, but he's not actually a child. No, I know. I have to keep reminding myself of that. (laughs) Just like Walter and the rest of the team, which is fine. He looks like one, but like he had emotions when we met him, you know, he 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 was very tactile, you know, like he grabs Olivia's arm when he's scared. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think as long as we didn't have season five. Michael. Yeah. (laughs) Like, you know, I think you could have picked up where we were and then you could have had September slash Donald be an actual father to him and be like, Mm. I am really sorry that I had to hide you. Mm -hmm. Um, But I, I needed to like, I needed to know you were okay. And like, now I can actually care for you, but I had to wait until the timelines meshed up again. You know, like, because you can always do that thing where it's like, I couldn't cross over my own timeline and I was waiting until that September, right? <laughs> you know, did the bad thing and the mm-hmm. observers took him away and like, and, you know, did Swear jar. to him. And I like, I'm coming from the future to take care of you like mm-hmm. a papa. You know, I kind of I like that. And that's kind of it's just made me think that I think part of part of what was going on in season five and where I would have wanted it to go is that just like Mm -hmm. instead of instead of season five, which basically lived in the negative space, right? Everything that everyone wanted and didn't have, if they just gave us the things that everyone wanted, it would have been a more interesting show, right? Like if they let Donald actually be a dad to Michael or like how we were talking about a few episodes back, if they let Etta be a fringe agent, and if we actually got to see her solve fringe cases instead of milling about in the world that she couldn't really be effective in and then dying, right? Or going yeah. even further back to something else we said, if they just made her Ella, right? Like yeah. if it's if it's the, exactly. the, if it's the invasion hasn't started yet, Donald has somehow warned them they have to stop the invasion from happening and Ella is helping them and she's a fringe agent. I mean, you could you could literally just do the thing where you fast forward like five years. Mm-hmm. Or like seven years or something, yeah. because because technically isn't Ella supposed to be like ten, nine? <laughs> I don't know something. I I'm bad at child ages, friends. I, I know. have no idea and how old she's supposed to be. Lost track of how long it had been since we had seen her. Exactly. Well, I mean, here's the other thing too: is I don't. I'm not super here for Peter gets completely erased from the timeline, and then. Olivia has to like squash the person she became. Mm, to yeah. Become Peter's Olivia. What yeah. universe Feels is this? Weird. The yellow one? Yellow universe? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, this is this is the universe we get right at the beginning of season four. Okay. Right? Yep, yep, yep. Couldn't you have done something different? Like, I mean, you had the observers kidnap their own. Couldn't the observers have just kidnapped Peter? 
instead of deleting I'm just him saying. from the timeline. <laughs> yes. I'm trying to cast my brain back to season four. <laughs> it was so, so long so ago. So season three, I know it was so long season ago. Three, season three I mean. ends. Season three ends with Peter walking into the machine. We get that yep. other, that first gray universe where like everything's awful because he destroyed the other universe. Mm-hmm. He comes back. He links the two universes and then he blips from the timeline completely. Right. And it's like he never existed. Because he's the parent. Well, not never right? existed, but it's like he died. He died he on the kid. Yeah. Yeah. He dies as a kid. Because he's the paradox. And in order to heal the universes, you have to delete the paradox. Right. Mm-hmm. Which didn't even heal the universes, but fine. Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> but like, this is what I mean. Like, well, it didn't. It didn't heal the universes because September didn't actually wipe Peter the way he was supposed to, right? Like, in theory, perhaps, if September had actually gone through with what he was supposed to do and really, really wiped Peter from the world and from everyone's memories, then the universes could have healed. Maybe. Maybe. That's what the show told us. Who am I to say? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, we also could have, like, not had Folivia get pregnant. Oh. Peter would just, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I feel like you had to erase Peter from the timeline so that Folivia didn't get pregnant and she didn't do all the bad things we don't mm-hmm. like her for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For us to then like her in season four. And I'm like, but what if she just wasn't that crappy? <laughs> 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 yep. You know? <laughs> like, I don't know. What Something? if she just what if she just didn't engage in this truly non-consensual relationship with Peter? Yep. I mean, like she could have bought, she could have done anything. She could have like broken his heart. She could have been like, you know what? I was thinking about it. It's not going to work. Mm-hmm. And then like had him be like a broken shell of a man because the woman he loves is like doesn't want to be with him. <laughs> and then surprise. You know what I mean? Like a bunch of other th- things could have happened. Like it didn't. <laughs> It didn't need to be this. It didn't but need like, to be I don't that. Know. I she think, didn't need to think literally racing... sleep with Peter in order to be a good double agent. Right? Yeah. Like, right. she could have just been on the team. Right. You, nobody can see my hand gestures. I'm waving <laughs> around a lot. I know. I'm sorry, friends. <laughs> and for an audience of three, like, if you were going to give me... The Olivia we had in seasons one through three. And if you were going to give me the Walter we had in seasons one through three, maybe don't make us do this, you know, hopscotch of like, is Peter supposed to be here? Isn't he supposed to be here? Mm-hmm. Is that his Olivia? It's like, well, who's his Olivia to begin with anyway? <laughs> you know, <laughs> just leave our OTP alone. Just leave him alone. But like, <laughs> but, it, but again, like you could have kidnapped like, the observers could have kidnapped Peter and been like, you're the variable that doesn't exist and you shouldn't be here. Like, I'm sure things like this have happened in other timelines. Don't they have, like, a time jail of, like, nope, Anomaly 824. Going in the box. <laughs> Going in the box. I mean, it seems like they usually just kill their anomalies or get rid of their anomalies. Yeah, right. They don't really yeah, seem fair. to save them. <laughs> that is fair. Why? I mean, it's far more efficient to just get rid of it. It's like right. what every villain should be doing. It's like, why aren't you in the room when they die? Yeah, exactly. Why, why are die. you creating this whole elaborate thing when you could just kill them? The way Olivia dies in the gray universe. Shocking, but efficient. And the only efficient. real way to kill a character. Also true. <laughs> so that that character gets a Viking funeral. <laughs> <laughs> In a, in a coffin not built for that. That's the villain I hate the most. The Viking funeral. The Viking funeral. Not the murder the butterflies. The Viking funeral was the villain in all of us the whole yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> what about side characters? Do we have some fave side characters? I really liked... <laughs> this is going to have to be like a cast your mind back. But I really liked the student who uh, kind of thought Walter was cute in college. And like... The, did the, the experiments with the LSD. Who, who first saw Peter's glowy aura. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, she was fantastic. I like <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little sad that she she was just there for the one time. But the, mm-hmm. like, man, she was just into it. She was just, it was, you know, it was, it was 70s. I don't know what to tell you. It was like, 70s. <laughs> she was into it. His, the one person he didn't traumatize with his experiments. Exactly. I'm okay with her as a great side character. I like Bug Lady. 
Oh, Bug Lady. Probably the only thing I don't like about Bug Lady is that Bug Lady essentially took Scarly away from us. Because he went on his honeymoon and just never came back. Yep, just never came back. It's just so I happy. hope that actor had too much going on, and it wasn't just, we don't have room for Charlie anymore. Yeah. There's always room for Charlie. There's always room for Charlie. <laughs> I loved Charlie. I loved, I loved, like, the banter that we got. I think solidly through seasons probably two through four. What do we think? Two, three, Between. four, three, four. Between all of our different characters, you know, between our between oh, our like yeah. between not only our core team, you know, when they kind of had it together or when the Bishop <laughs> boys were back, but also between our gym rats, you know, like as soon as we lost, as soon as we lost Scarly, that buddy broy gym rat feel just kind of left the space. Yeah, I know. It took it took all the wind out of the sails with him when he went. <laughs> he was he was the glue. He was the glue. I I also like um I mean talk about banter. Like I I talk, talk about a character that should have happened and didn't. And mm-hmm. I always kind of went like this is my biggest like this plot hole is so huge that I think they couldn't deal with it because the, there would be no coming back. Remember the man who's supposed to kill Olivia with a big X on his shirt? Oh, yeah. Whatever happened to that guy? (laughs) (laughs) Who's that? Oh, that's the guy who's going to kill me. What? (laughs) And then it just never happened. And nothing. And nothing. Because that universe ceased to exist and so nothing matters. And so nothing matters. Okay, (laughs) bye. From the Inception episode. I, you know, <laughs> I completely how, forgot how about, about this? That. How about favorite science? Is there any favorite science of the weird sciences we had or, or, or hmm. weird fringe event? Again, still like that one town where they, uh, they were all, um, an illusion of, uh, a cover. Oh yes. <laughs> you know, and then you, you cross the boundary and then you can see things as they really are. Very Twilight Zone. I enjoyed it. <laughs> mm, the Twilight Zone episode. I thought I you were about it. to. I thought you were about to talk about that town with the with the doubles where people started mushing together with their doppelgangers. Also a good one. I thought that was a that pretty one good one too. too. That was a pretty good episode. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Properly horrifying. Yeah, um. exactly. Like a decent <laughs> amount of body horror. I, you know, I miss. I miss the. I think I miss the ick. Of season one. Yeah, the gross factor sort of comes <laughs> comes to a more manageable level. Right. Like and more I'm than, just not about that life. More than specifically science that I really enjoyed. I I I really enjoyed the ick factor of season yeah. one. And I kind of wish the ick factor had just kind of continued through the rest of the show and through the rest of the science. Because there was so much science in later seasons that they could have made way more gross. And it's and it's it's such a good like fallback to go back to those those good special effects mm-hmm. where it's like again as I think I said in the very first episode of this season it's like if you can't really deal with the first episode in the first ten minutes not even the first five minutes the cold <laughs> open if mm-hmm. you can't cold open that fringe is not for you and it's like they kept it kind of consistently I think through season one. And then they kind of lost it somewhere around yeah, season two. Exactly. I was going to say there's a little bit of it in season two. But then as soon as we get introduced to the other universe and to everyone's alter selves, it kind of just goes out the window. I know. Yeah. I was a little sad about it. I was sad to see it go. I mean, I think I think they were going for more cerebral uh, things at that point because they were also more focused on their main characters, mm-hmm. um, which has its benefits and its, you know. It's it's pros and it's cons. <laughs> no, that's a that's a fair point because I think that there was a lot that I did not like about season three, right? Like everything that mm-hmm. happened with Peter and Olivia. Yeah. But season three is really when they hit their stride when it came to characters and character moments. Which is so hard to pinpoint because it's like, yes, it's a monster of the week show, but mm-hmm. then you really hit into this long form storytelling in season three. Yeah. And it's like, oh, the show can actually do that, mm-hmm. um, which is, again, also why I missed the 
I miss the fact that you could have done that in, well, if, if we don't get rid of <laughs> season five whole hog, or if we combine <laughs> it with season four, whatever, if we do what we want to do at the end of it, like, you could have still had fringe teams out there solving fringe cases. Like, I fully believe that in an observer future, there's still weird stuff happening. Yeah. You know, like, we had weird stuff without the the Observers that had nothing to do with the Observers. Mm -hmm. Some of it did, but, like, most of it was just weird stuff that people just did. Yeah. So are you telling me in this universe that this doesn't happen anymore? (laughs) (laughs) There are no more scientists who want to, I don't know, grow beetles inside of people's bellies. Or create a time loop. Create a time loop. Oh, the time loop. I forgot about the time loop. Yep. Freaking love the time loop episode. It's de- That's one of my, like, outer limits episodes, you know? Like, you don't quite know what's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like, you keep looking. You kind of have to squint <laughs> to see what's happening. <laughs> it's one of the, I think, one of the failings that it didn't keep enough of a monster of the week kind of feel as the show went on. You know, because, it, because again, I think you even said, Danielle, like... <laughs> The way that Olivia and Peter talk about their feelings is they vomit their feelings at each other in the middle of a case because they don't have time because everything's <laughs> a ticking clock. Like, you know, and we lose that. I even think somewhere in the middle of season four, you know, yeah. like there's a whole episode where we just kind of wander around following different characters. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but that's not, <laughs> that's not the show I've been watching. Right. You know? What I what I want is the kind of pacing, actually, that we also get in Almost Human, Right. Where every right. time they're traveling from one place to another, they squeeze in a quick conversation, you know, and right. then we move on with the case. <laughs> like, listen, they're brats to each other on the stairway up to the up to the, the hostage to negotiation. The exactly. In the car on the way to the whatever, because Boston is 15 minutes away. <laughs> like, this is when we're going to have those conversations. Yeah, and we and we and we lose track. I I, I did realize I think somewhere in the middle of re- the rewatch, I can't exactly remember where uh, that some of the producers for Almost Human and Fringe are the same, and I was ah. like, ah, this is why we're getting some similarities here in this storyline. <laughs> <laughs> that track <laughs> has to be. <laughs> some of some of these episodes feel like they are in the same universe, and here's mm-hmm. why. <laughs> Oh man, um, I really like Markham. Markham, yes. our Markham, our not Markham. season I was five gonna say. or season four or season five. Markham, our not Markham. That Markham, original Markham, one through three. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, much like so much of this show, this is how I watch Fringe. Right, I watch all <laughs> the way through it, and then I get to the end. I get to season five, and I barrel my way through season five because I simply must finish. And then, as a palate cleanser, I just go right back to season one. Because that's all I want to do. Like, I don't even really want to think about season five. Seasons one through three. I would watch those over and over. I mean, that's kind of where it's at. Mm -hmm. I I do love that, like, Nella got to have that reaction of at the end of three and Peter's, like, blipped out of existence. And she's just like, well, what? What do we do now? Yeah. <laughs> and I was gone. like, yes, this was me watching it live on network television as it was happening. Like, but what? But what? But what? But what? But no Left. Peter? No Peter? Is Peter <gasps> is he is he not is Joshua Jackson just not in the rest of the show? Was that he? <laughs> Can you imagine what would happen if Fringe just deleted Joshua Jackson from the entire series? Good lord. I, I would have hated it. I would have hated that. Yeah. There's no replacement for him. No, there really isn't. <laughs> like kind of like how they tried to insert Lincoln briefly as a substitute for Peter. And I was just like, nope, you're not the same. No one asked for this. <laughs> I mean, Folivia asked for this. True. Olivia got it. Like, I <laughs> like that little button. I will forever be like, see, Frosted Tips? She was just not that into you. I don't know a bigger smackdown than I'm more into your doppelganger than you, bud. <laughs> Your doppelganger, who is very different from you. Who is very different, like, just very different in demeanor, but essentially the same person, like, has the same experience. Mm-hmm. <laughs> who is just, like, a meek, adorable little mouse who just wants to be a part of the team. 
And, like, generally goes with the flow and, like, doesn't try to disrupt anything. But then sticks to his guns when he knows that it's going to be, that it's going to move the case forward, right? Like, right. sticks to his guns, literally switched universes. Because what he wanted, ultimately, was to solve the case of the shapeshifters, which, whatever happened with that. And, <laughs> and be with Olivia. Well, and be not with Olivia, and not Peter, the way they were. I mean, yeah. really, just not. <laughs> like, I appreciate that he understood pretty quickly that Folivia was not him, mm -hmm. you know? And I don't know mm -hmm. if that was because Frosted Tips was also pretty quickly not him. But, like, again, <laughs> he just goes along with it. What was it like? The, the, I think you picked up on it with the, um, how quickly he just adopts the name for the fungus. Oh, yeah. And he just starts calling it Gus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. He's like, he's the person in the party where it's like, oh, cool. Yeah. What's your name? Got it. And like, we'll just call you. But you prefer to be called this? Awesome. Got it. And like, Here we'll we call go. you that for the rest of the game. And that's it. <laughs> that's the way to do it. That's how you do it. It's very high uh -huh. empathy. <laughs> <laughs> I really do like that, Lincoln. <laughs> he says, he's just a good, good boy. <laughs> Just a good, good boil. And that was a good button. You know what? Let's call it. That's my favorite part of season five. I think my favorite part of season five is that... <laughs> is that Lincoln and Folivia end up happy together. That's there it, you guys. Go. Yeah. You know what? I'll allow that. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe like Winmark getting smushed like a bug. I would have liked to have seen a body. There was no body left. There was no body left. The show has given us <laughs> gross... Bodies deteriorating while the people are still walking around in them and explodey bodies and bodies that burst into flame. I don't know, man. There could have been a body instead of just blood on a windshield or something. Bodies that ooze. Bodies that ooze. Oh, so Dem good. oozing bodies. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think mm. if there's anything that I absolutely did not like other than... Like, the worst of the worst. Other than Ted Bundy with a pituitary problem, which is pretty bad. It's bad. I think it's just bad because of where it happens in the in the story of Fringe. Like, it happens mm -hmm. in the third episode. It happens mm -hmm. so quickly. And it's mm. like, this was one of the things that, like, when I tried to show this show to Nella earlier, like, you know, years ago, she yeah, was like, yeah. I can't. Like, mm. we're just, like... Hurting women. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, the first three or four episodes are just, like, women getting hurt left and right. And, like, women are the victims. And it's awful. It was know? rough. It was real rough. <laughs> but, like, I can't. That's fair. I, like, I really hate it. But I don't know if I hate its placement in the show more than I actually hate the episode. It. You know what I mean? Like. Do you remember a moment in which you did start buying more into the show, Nella? It's hard to say. Come back to me on that. I have to think about it. Yeah, no, fair. <laughs> I think that is fair. I'm kind of scrolling through my notes for season one and trying to see how many episodes in it is before we get victims that are not women. And probably it's it so would be long. probably it would be right around there, right? Because yeah. I'm even looking at, I don't know, my notes for episode six, which is when is that the Bellini women? Oh my yeah, god, it Bellini, might be. yeah, Bellini, that's the Bellini women. Yeah, episode six is the Bellini women. Now, episode seven was kind of fun. That's when they had the heart centipede. So, oh that. yes, the uh, the Mario the Mario Kart character <laughs> hugging around the dude's heart. That was kind of hilarious. I wanted that guy to be a little. I well, actually, I guess we did kind of get him as a minor villain. I, I don't know. I think I wanted more of him. I feel like he got off a little too easy. <laughs> but we had him for a couple episodes. He was pretty good. Yeah, we did. And then the next episode was The Equation, which was on the one with the child. Yes. So, yeah, you know, probably I, right around there. Those were two I episodes in a row. I feel like, for me, it was, it was more like the episode, trying to think of what episode it was where I felt like I, I was like, fine, I'm just going to turn my brain off. Like, mm. it's, this is fine. I, th I do think it started around Porcupine Man. Ah, <laughs> Porcupine Man. Yeah. Ugh. Like, either Porcupine Man or, like, when the guy ends up half in the wall of the bank. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> you know, a heist and, episode. Yeah. 
Yeah, but and then, you know, but like there's that one and then there's Porcupine Man. And I, I know I like I thought the, sp- the the spinal fluid drainage one was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I only really like that for the actor who played the doctor. Yes. In that. Although I do. I, that's not true. I like it for two reasons. I like it because it was finally a thing that was like you do a thing out of love and it kind of, like, destroys you, but not in the way that, like, makes you a mean <laughs> person and a terrible, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, sure. he wasn't angry. He was just like, I wish I could give even more of myself to help my wife. Ah, uh, yes. You know, he gave of himself before turning to murder. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's in just fact, like, she I don't can't think it help was... it. <laughs> yes, exactly. It wasn't really him that was doing the murdering. Again, yeah, this is I feel why like I feel like this. as soon as season one stepped away from always making women the victims in their monster of the weeks, um, I just I I got more into it. It just it took a while to get there. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah so it like was season just, it was one, episode ten ish, because ten is the is the safe episode. Yeah, with the heist. In the bank. Well, yeah, I think I think we get. Um, I think somewhere in there is like David Robert Jones and the money, mm-hmm. and the orifice, the orifice, ah, the orifice loser. stuff. <laughs> yeah, good old orifice powder. I mean, I I like David Robert Jones, but but not in the way he feels a little one note to me, and it sucks because I love Jared Harris, and mm. I'm just like, ah, uh, I I think there's only so smarmy you can be before I check out. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. No less detected. But they also just didn't really let his character do anything interesting. You know, like the most yeah. interesting thing his character did was breaking out of prison. Yep. And then as soon as he broke out of the, the prison, it was kind of like, well, now what? And now what? <laughs> <laughs> but like you could have you could have made him so much more of a zealot, right? Like you could have mm-hmm. given him this extra zeal for stuff, right? And instead, it's like he's a little too cool. I wanted more. <laughs> I wanted a juicier villain from David Robert Jones, and I kind of never really got it. Yeah. But that was because, and that, that you know, we've talked a little bit about this. That's because they just wanted that whole big build up to William Bell, you know? Like, they didn't True. want William Bear- Bell to share the limelight with anyone more interesting. Well, I, th- I think what we lost is in season one, David Robert Jones dies because Peter closes the rift on him. Yep. Yeah. And like, I think what that did was when they tried to bring him back, it wasn't quite working because he's not, they didn't let him reach his full potential or they didn't have him well-rounded enough. So then it just became a one trick pony of every time they brought him back, this is what he's doing. He's trying mm. to impress William Bell and he's trying to activate Olivia and he's trying mm-hmm. to activate Olivia and he's trying to impress William Bell. And it's like the man can have other things going on. <laughs> like he also idealized Walter. Like, yes, that's true. We could have done, I don't know, we just could have done a lot more with David Robert Jones. And I feel like when they killed him off, it was like, oops. Oop. You know? <laughs> yeah. How do I pick just one more thing? <laughs> Fair. My, well, my one more thing is a little bit of a, it's, it's a little bit of a sad one. Okay, go for it. So, yeah, so I'll just, I'll just kind of rip off that Band-Aid. Um, I know we talked a little bit about Markham. Uh, and the actor who played Markham actually passed away in October of 2020 um, due to the West Nile virus, of all things. Whoa. 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 Yeah. Man, he was a really good actor. Like, he just, he did, he did such a good job. Clark Middleton. I just, I learned about that and I was like, ah, damn it. (laughs) Aw, that is sad. But I like, I wanted to mention it because... You know, I think I also mentioned on this season that I'm that I'm doing a catch up of Blacklist and he's in that mm-hmm. show also, which, by ah. the way, any fans of this actor really need to watch him in Blacklist because he really mm-hmm. shines. Um, but because they're still going, I think they're in the middle, uh, the end of their ninth season. Now, he passed away while they were filming their eighth season. So they actually were able to do like a tribute episode to his character and just had him pass away in story. Mm-hmm. Um, and they actually left it in canonically that he passed away from West Nile virus. And I was oh like, my gosh, oh. huh? Whoa. <laughs> oh, okay. There, there it goes. Pretty there wild. Huh? Right. 
Um, but it's it's a very good episode where because his character in, in Blacklist is so um, just likes to, like, take the piss out of people and likes to throw random stuff at the wall and, like, really get under people's skin. He mm-hmm. leaves this letter t- to the to the main character of like, hey, it would be super great if you got Huey Lewis to show up at my memorial service because the way I've been able to cover for you giving me a ton of money is by saying that I'm Huey Lewis's muse. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have this monster criminal show up for Huey Lewis and like, he doesn't even know what he's saying. He's like, oh my um, gosh, I have a weird request. I don't even know what you're going to say. You're going to think I'm insane, but but uh, it would be really great if you did this and I would pay you mm-hmm. to do this. <laughs> yeah. You have one more thing, Nella? Um, just, you know, thanks for letting me come on this journey with you both. Um, I can't <laughs> wait to donate probably what will shake out to about $150 worth to Black Girls Code uh, in honor of Astrid, who deserved better. Yes, Astrid. Who deserves better? Astra gets the shaft in every timeline. Well, listen, I'm glad that you stayed with us on this journey for all five seasons. Despite yeah, I didn't think, pa- getting I didn't painful think that would at happen. moments. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was going to happen. I was like, I didn't, you know, I'm not going to hold it against you if you don't want to finish the show. Like, I no, never, I was I never do that to you. Mm-mm, I was committed. Right. And, you know, if you want to nope out after season three, nope out after season three, you know? No. no. I thought she was going to nope out after Charlie. <laughs> I was oh, like, oh, man, she's faith. not even going to make it past season one. Crap. <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> well, you did it, Joy. You finally got me to watch Fringe. You're welcome. Yeah. I did. I made, and I made you watch all of it. If we were oh. in full disclosure. Full disclosure, we were watching this just for funsies. I'm pretty sure I would have been like, you don't need to see season five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, it does it doesn't matter. It's not narratively relevant to the rest of it. So you don't need to watch Super it. Super not. Like, especially since you have that teaser of like, and you either love it or hate it. Mm-hmm. Like, you get that teaser at the end of season four. It's like, did you hate it? That's season five. You're welcome. <laughs> like... Although I I am very glad that we finally got to the point of uh, finally Nella knew why I was like, God, season five is so bat bonkers. Bonkers. Yep, sure is. (laughs) And and she was just like, what happens the whole time? And I was like, I can't even explain it to you because it's too off the wall. You just have to experience it like the rest of us did. (laughs) Do you have a one more thing, Danielle? I don't know. I don't know what my one more thing is. Maybe my one more thing is just a final shout out to all of my favorites. Ah, We already did a final shout out to Astrid. I have to give a final shout out to Charlie. Beautiful Charlie. Mm. And one of the show's greatest callbacks, which is that Scarly is full of spiders. Yes. Bugs. Yes. Arachnids. (laughs) Yes. Fantastic. Nina and her hair full of secrets. secrets. I will love her forever. Bangs that just don't quit. Mm -mm. Bangs that just don't quit. Broils. Who somehow Royals. found a way to make his bureaucratic self lovable. How'd he do I it? I don't know. I know. That's but all he, he does. But he, he did, did it. it. <laughs> My favorite thing about that is like the actor was. Uh, so in the pilot, the actor was obviously fresh off the wire. Yeah. Because mm. he even still had some of the like Maryland kind of accent that he affected for the wire in that in mm. that pilot episode. Like it was kind of still there. And it was like, it was so funny, the like heel turn that Royals does, even in that pilot, like Mm -hmm. in the pilot, it's like, I think we got off on the wrong foot. Like he even (laughs) even (laughs) apologizes to her that like, I think I was sassing you and I, I'm sorry, but like you messed up a friend of mine. So I felt like I had to come out guns blazing. And it's like, (laughs) oh boy, I don't know how somehow... Somehow, Broyles ended up being, like, my favorite part of the whole show. I don't know. <laughs> I know. They really, really turned his character around in a way that was super effective. Yeah. So there. That's it. My final shout out to some of my favorites. Solid. Solid. <laughs> and that's, uh, oh, and we get to talk about next season. <gasps> which, which I don't even, I've forgotten what decision we've made, actually, Joy. I believe, so, yes, I believe we have actually made the decision to do Kipo. Uh, because Kipo felt a little more on brand. Mm-hmm. Or uh, Kipo and the Wonder Beasts 
which is currently streaming on Netflix. Um, and it's a it's a shorty. It's only about thirty episodes. It's three seasons long, and we'll just we'll just be t- the episodes are so short too. So I don't know how long season three will take us. We'll just have to see how many we kind of squeeze in there. Um, yeah. but it's cute, and I think Danielle nice will really like it. And I haven't and seen not it. copaganda. See, not I copaganda. can like shows that are not copaganda, Danielle. <laughs> It's not it's all not, I am. It's not me you have to convince, Joy. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> I have to convince myself. All right, listeners. <laughs> well, on that note, we would love to hear from you. Please check us out at Binge O'Clock Pod on Twitter and Facebook, where you can answer the question, what is your favorite episode of Fringe? You can also email us at bingeoclockpod at gmail.com. And don't forget, we have a Patreon. Find us at patreon.com slash clockpod. That's right. And tell your friends, tell your family, tell your loved ones, tell the live lobsters in your life about Binge O'Clock, and we will see you next time.